24th meeting of the Hay City Commission to order. All commissioners are present. Uh, minutes? Any changes? No Any changes. Minutes? Financial statement, Mr. Rupp. Thank you. This is a summary of revenue and expenditure, expenditure activities for the City of Hayes, month ended May 31, 2021. Revenues in May totaled five million one forty six two ninety one. That's an increase of two million eight sixty three compared to the same period as last year. Some notable areas of increased revenue. Uh, a year ago, the property tax distribution was received at the beginning of June. Uh, this year, the distribution of two million five twenty five was received in the last part of May. Uh, uh, contributed to the large increase mentioned above. This includes ad valorem and motor vehicle taxes. Transient guest tax was up 13480 when compared to this time last year. Year to date, it is still down 14%, keeping in mind the two month lag in distribution of receipts. Miscellaneous revenue and parks improvement increased 18638 That's due to the receipt of proceeds from an insurance claim for wind damage to the backstop at net at Larks Park. Following suit with the amount of rain we've had, month-to-date residential water consumption fell negative 16 percent. However, business was up 11 percent, likely due to restaurants reopening since COVID. Year-to-date, total consumption is up 1.76 percent, with revenue up 4.4 percent. I didn't have any notable areas of revenue decreases. Expenditures in May totaled 1,847,148. That's a decrease of 7 million, 7.2 million as compared to 2020. Notable areas of increased expenditures, outside agency expenditures for CVB increased 9,500 due simply to the timing of allocation to one agency. Signal light upgrades at 27th and Hall increased equipment expense for public works 8,700. Also general supplies rose 10,600 for items included in annual street repairs. Notable areas of decreased expenditure, other contractual for the airport fund fell 15,200 due to timing of payment to the Fulton Arkstar, and the large decrease noted above was due to the payment of 7.1 million to KDOT for the city's portion of the North Vine Quarter project at this time last year. Lower claims decreased health insurance costs, however, the larger portion of the $40,500 decrease, according to HR Director, is the fact that the city switched to the self-insured program for 21. Therefore, the amount paid for claims as they occur is lower than what would be paid in premium to this point. New equipment reserve expenditures fell 120,448 due to the purchase of two pickups and two green mowers a year ago. Month to date, general fund sales tax collections were at 776,929. That's an increase of 206,538, or 36% as compared to last year. It would be okay to talk to stop right here and everybody can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Year to date, general fund sales tax collections are at 3,338,900, up 217,720, or 7%. The six month average is at 5.37%. That's a decrease of 40 basis points when compared to a year ago. Month to date, the county sales tax collections were at 92,643, with a year to date total of 404,125. The report of top 10 quarter to date sales tax collections by classification was up 225,000, or 11.8%. The largest percentage increases were in accommodation at 30%, new and used car dealers at 27%, and electronic shopping at 26%. The portfolio certificates of deposit on May 31, 2021 totaled 32.5 million with a weighted average interest rate of three basis points, down to negative 1.5 from a year ago. Total par value of the U.S. Treasury notes is 5,025,000 with a weighted average yield of maturity of six basis points, Total balance of the money market account on May 31 was 28.75 million, with a current yield of five basis points. Total list investments are down 10,248,000. I'll make a motion to accept the May 2021 financial statement. I'll second that. It's been moved by Commissioner Malik, seconded by Commissioner Reuter to approve the financial statement. Any questions or comments? I just think it shows that uh, our communities doing a good job welcoming people back to our community and um, I think it's uh, only going to get better this summer and it's exciting to see these numbers. I agree totally. I think what it tells me is um, we have a lot of people staying at home to shop and I think that's a really big deal in this yep. community right now. I think that people are very committed to the success of this community and looking for some really exciting things in the future and this is one of them. Absolutely. Any other comments? 
I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. Any citizen comment? A lot of citizens, no comment. Consent agenda, there's no items to be approved. First item, uh, Kansas Public Employees Retirement System Capers 457 Plan, Aaron Giebler. Good evening, Commissioners. Aaron Giebler, Director of Human Resources. In 1980, the City of Hayes began offering a deferred compensation plan through ICMA as an additional way for employees to save for retirement. In 2007, Hartford was added as an additional record keeper, and in 2013, Hartford was bought out by Mass Mutual. In 2016, the city moved from two record keepers to one, with Mass Mutual being the record keeper that was kept. Currently, we have 47 employees enrolled in the city's 457 plan, and the city offers both pre-tax and Roth contribution options, as well as having a loan provision. Recently, employees have expressed displeasure with our current plan provider, and due to this, we started comparing our current plan with CAPERS 457. The CAPERS 457 plan began in the 1980s with the Roth option added in 2017. Currently, over 400 governmental agencies in Kansas offer the CAPERS 457 plan, and their current record keeper is in power. Areas of each plan, area of, areas of each plan that were reviewed include customer service, fees, performance, and plan offerings. During the review, we found that CAPERS has a local representative based here in Hayes. Fees were significantly lower on the CAPERS 457 plan. Performances were comparable, and both offered the same contribution options as well as loans. This change would not cost anything, so I'm not up here asking for any money, um, since offering a 457 plan to our employees is a no-cost benefit um, to the city of Hayes. In order to join the CAPERS 457 plan, Kansas law requires the governing body to enact a, a resolution. The commission has the following options. They can approve the resolution and join our agreement, do nothing, or provide staff with other direction. City staff recommends that you approve the resolution and join our agreement, and this is the action that I'm requesting tonight. I move we approve resolution number 2021-008 and the State of Kansas Public Employee Deferred Compensation Plan Joinder Agreement, authorizing a deferred compensation plan for the employees of the City of Hayes, Kansas, and repealing all previous resolutions, motions, or actions in conflict therewith. I'll second. It's been moved by Commissioner Reuter, seconded by Commissioner Musical. Is there any questions, discussion? When does it take effect then? So if you pass it tonight, I'll get the paper signed and sent to CAPERS or CAPERS 457, not to be confused, that is different CAPERS and CAPERS 457. Um, and it will take 60 to 90 days for the process. The hope is to be done by October 1st. Um, and we're hoping closer to that 60 day, but we'll start moving on it. Are the employees blacked out from contributions during? Not for the whole three months, but there will be a time that's blacked out uh, for a week or two. Not I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Passes 5 0. Thank, Thank you, Aaron. You. Ellis County Multi Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan, Chief Ryan Higgins. Good evening, Commissioners. Ryan Higgins, Fire Chief. We're here to talk about the 2020 Ellis County Multi Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. This is a routine plan that was last adopted uh, by the city in 2012. A uh, plan like this specifies that a community may use uh, to reduce risk from national, uh, natural disasters. Uh, Ellis County is requesting that each jurisdiction adopt this plan. And by adopting the plan, uh, the city is eligible uh, for future hazard mitigation uh, grant funding uh, that may become available. Uh, this plan does not mandate any further action by the city Hayes it does, however, suggest actions for future considerations to reduce the risk from natural disasters. Currently, there is no financial obligation. And our options, approve the resolution to adopt the 2020 Ellis County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan, do not approve the resolution, or instruct staff otherwise. And this is the action that we are requesting. I'll move to approve resolution number 2021-009, adopting the Ellis County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. 
I'll second. It's been moved by Commissioner Burgess, seconded by Commissioner Mellick. Any discussion or questions? If not, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes 5 0. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Kingsgate Second Edition <coughs> Board of Bid, Jesse Rohr. Good evening. Jesse Rohr, Director of Public Works. So we've got a couple items to discuss with you tonight. The first being the request for a water bid for the improvements to the Kingsgate Second Edition. The owner of the, pro of the property has submitted a new development for consideration, much of which was approved earlier this year. The property is adjacent to the previously platted Kingsgate First Edition, and this is a continuation of that particular development. This is the final phase of that development. So as I mentioned, Covenant Land and Developing, the owners of the property, they had uh, earlier this year petitioned the city for street, storm sewer, water, and sanitary sewer improvements for Kingsgate Second Edition. That was approved back in, uh, I believe, February of this year. You can see on the screen here the general location of the property, being west of Hall, north of 41st Street. And then over here you can see the existing Kingsgate Edition and then the new proposed area that contains 22 platted lots. So now um, the image is uh, tipped here of uh, the north being on the right of the screen. You can see the layout. It is one cul-de-sac uh, known as <coughs> Royal Court. And uh, I mentioned there's 22 lots within the development. Along with the street, uh, they'll construct about 600 linear feet of 8-inch water line. Uh, approximately 750 feet of 8-inch sanitary sewer and then all the uh, manholes, fire hydrants, and everything associated with those. We did open bids on May 25th of this year and you can see we received bids from three different bidders as you can see on the screen. The low bidder was from Morgan Brothers Construction. As we talked about when we brought the petition for you earlier this year, this will be special assessed. 70% of those costs are assessed, 30% are paid by the developer up front at award of bid. Um, based on the costs of the, the low bid, the cost per lot for those 22 lots is approximately $21,000, which equates to just under $90 per month uh, once fully assessed and that's right at or maybe even slightly below some of the most recent developments that we've done. For this item, these are your options, either to award the bid to low bidder as recommended or choose another bidder or reject all bids and this would be the action requested. And with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll make a motion to authorize the city manager to enter a contract with Morgan Brothers Construction in the amount of $615,900.81 for the construction of street, water, stormwater, and sanitary sewer improvements for the development of 22 lots with, within the King's Gate Second Edition. I'll second that. Been moved by Commissioner Musil, seconded by Commissioner Reuter. Any discussion? Not all call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Thank you, Jesse. We can go on to the rezoning of the tract of land owned by Hess Land LLC located at 5809 230th Avenue. Okay, my second item for you tonight, as I just mentioned, is a rezoning request for a piece of property on 230th Avenue north of I 70. And the request is to rezone it from ag zoning to I-2 or heavy industrial. So on your map here, you can see the general location. It is on the west side of 230th Avenue, north of Interstate 70. It is a just over 32 acre tract of land owned by Hess Land LLC and generally known as 5809 230th Avenue. Property is located just outside of city limits, but does fall within our extraterritorial jurisdiction. This area, that's North I-70, has many industrial uses within close proximity of the property, including the Goodman Energy Center, uh, the Ellis County Concrete Batch Plant, and Hess Services, among others. Here you can see the current zoning map of the property and surrounding properties. 
As I mentioned earlier, it is currently zoned ag. You can see some public institutional districts there in the blue. The purple shaded areas are other industrial zoned areas, and we have some commercial areas further to the south. And I mentioned the, the property is just outside city limits, but it does fall within our ETJ. So ETJ actually extends clear north to Feedlot Road. Currently, there are no plans for annexation of this property or subdivision of the property. It is to remain a 32-acre tract um, as it currently stands. As with any zoning we bring before you, we'd like to show you the, the allowed and the special uses that are associated with the proposed zoning. So on your screen, these are the uses that are listed within our Unified Development Code, and these uses are allowed by right. Uh, so no special permits or special um, requirements are needed for these uses to go in any I-2 zone property. When rezoning a property, you should consider all uses rather than any one particular use. These uses are what's known as limited uses. Um, there's minimal requirements for limited uses, uh, such as maybe buffering or landscape requirements for these types of uses within the I-2 zoning. And then the third classification would be special uses. These are, I guess, considered the most intensive uses, and therefore they would require a special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals after a public hearing, and so um, um, these are not considered uses by right since they do require that extra extra level of uh, action. So the state statute gives you three particular options that you can choose from. Uh, you can approve the zoning request as recommended by the Planning Commission and City staff. You can send it back to the Planning Commission for further consideration or you could choose to deny the rezoning request. And if you do that, since the Planning Commission did recommend approval, denial by the City Commission would require a two-thirds majority vote of the City Commission. And this would be the action requested. I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 3999, authorizing the change in zoning from AL Agriculture to I-2 Heavy Industrial District for a 32322 acre tract of land owned by Hess Land LLC, generally located at 5809 230th Avenue. Seconded. It's been moved by Commissioner Malik, seconded by Commissioner Burgess. Discussion? I think we discussed it out last week. Uh, call <laughs> for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Economic Development Policy Amendment on the RHID section. Colin Belzer. Good evening. Colin Belzer, Assistant City Manager. And so the Rural Housing Incentive District section of our Economic Development Policy has been discussed a few times uh, by you all. And to brief timeline, so the RHID policy that the city has was established in 2013. It's been utilized one time. May 6, uh, it became for you at the work session, and the consensus was to receive remove, excuse me, most restrictions of uh, over and above state statute. Um, the only uh, exception is developer reimbursement is required underneath this policy. Bond financing would not be allowed. May 20th, there was a discussion to make a minor revision for the commission's ability to vary from the policy, and so that was strengthened. And then just last week, uh, it was changed from two years to three years uh, for updating the housing assessment study. We'll apologize. The policy that was in the packet still says two years, but it's been changed. So if you do approve it, it'll reference three years, not two. Uh, there's no known legal obstacles to proceeding as recommended. No immediate financial considerations. And your options are to adopt the modified economic development policy, do nothing, or provide staff with further direction. And here's the action requested. I move we approve the modifications to the RHID section of the Economic Development Policy as presented. Second. Oh, so did I get one or two? Oh, it's been <laughs> moved by Commissioner Reuter, seconded by Commissioner Musil. Any further discussion, questions? I guess for me, uh, my hope would be is, you know, when we talked about this earlier, uh, <coughs> other of our peer communities have had this what was interesting to me is we've still built more houses than them, but as we all know, we need more houses, and uh, my goal is hopefully, if 
if this gets used more, maybe we'll build even more. I mean, we don't know, but I think it's a good option to have out there. So. It's certainly an opportunity if somebody yeah. is interested in it. Yep. I'm excited to see what happens. Yep. Okay, let's call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Aye. Passes for one. Progress report. Colin. Colin Belzer, Assistant City Manager. And for this latest month's progress report, uh, PI staff or public, or excuse me, um, planning inspection enforcement staff, Curtis Dinas and Kate Armstrong, assisted with damage assessment at Natoma last month. So the state chapter of the International Code Council has a damage assessment team to assist the state and FEMA with assessment of, uh, of damage and those two staff members volunteered their time to assist the Natoma um, cleanup. And the picture on the right, you can see how high the water was in that particular residence. Public Works, two alley returns of Fort Street between 6th and 7th were repaired. And General Custer and Holmes Road, there were two deteriorated flow lines that uh, were replaced with concrete. The fire department, firefighter Coits and firefighter Woods serve as EMTs on the Special Situation Response Team, or SSRT. And here they are during the latest training on how to control severe trauma bleeding. And the Parks Department, Seven Hills, or Arc Park, continues to progress. Um, here's a picture of the splash pad development. The parking lot is substantially complete. Some work does remain. Um, there's actually a shortage in the availability of pavement marking paint, so that should be done in a couple weeks. For now, this, uh, the parking lot will remain closed while construction is ongoing and for uh, the Parks Department to establish the grass. And then the playground perimeter fence installation is underway. Also along Chitola Canal, staff planted seven trees. Uh, or the vicinity of General Custer Drive south of 22nd Street. Staff has also been adding fall zone material to playgrounds. In IT, so coming in 2022 is going to be a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline 988. So what that require will go to 10-digit dialing. Um, so you'll have to use the 785. Uh, IT has been making the changes to fax machines, uh, speed dials, fire and security alarms, and other uh, infrastructure that requires phone systems. Here's Corporal Scott Hyman reading to kids at the library as part of their summer reading program. Also, Lieutenant Brandon Wright conducted radar training for members of the Hayes Police Department. There's a lot more to the radar than I realized. Apparently, it has to be <laughs> calibrated and certified. <laughs> I did not know it was so technical. Um, on July or June 3rd, Holly Dickman presented the Water Smart Landscape at the library as part of the Crossroads exhibit. Here's water resource staff loading bio, uh, biosolids. So as a byproduct of our waste treatment um, is EPA refers to it as sludge, um, but it must be removed offsite and it gets spread on to farm ground. There was an alarm issue at the Dakota lift station after the uh, hail and rainstorm we had on May 26. So here is Mark Lang and Sean Swift addressing it. Also, just a couple days ago, you probably saw or heard there was a water leak on uh, 22nd and Vine. And then here's a picture of uh, staff actually cutting out the damaged section of the pipe. And CVB, Melissa Dixon and Sarah Bloom with Downtown Hayes Development Corp present a session on the March to Maine welcome event. Uh, Mayor Jacobs also had her own panel for that. Brandon Cooley with CB has completed virtual tours of these three spaces that are now found on visithaze.com to help visitors kind of get an idea of what's what there is to do in Hayes. They've been busy with events. So on the left is Melissa Dixon and the CVB's hospitality and tourism summer intern Israel Luna. Uh, they're actually helping at a Kansas Emergency Managers Association conference that was at the Hilton Garden Inn. In the middle is Melissa helping with the Amateur Athletics Union Missouri Valley Track and Field District Qualifier event that had roughly 600 to 1,000 participants. 
And then on the right, Janet Kuhn in Israel again at the um, uh, junior golf championship that had Smoky Hill a couple weeks ago. During the latest art, uh, uh, art walk, CB provided a chalk art station. The runway, the lighting rehab uh, continues to progress. They, it is on track to complete on time. On the left, you can see the conduit, and on the right, they're replacing and putting the lights uh, in cans, and they're going to LED. Uh, in Playments, uh, it was reported to us this morning by Jamie Salter, Director of Airport, um, that we are at 1,018, for, and we're on track to be about 1,150, so we're above 2018 numbers for uh, the airport. And as you can see, a year ago, it was only at 218, so it's... It's uh, rebounded quicker than the national average here in Hayes. And I would add that uh, the 1223 in 2019 included the Chicago flight. Which we don't uh, have yeah. now. So, very good performance there. Project management, 27th Street reconstruction continues. Um, next week, construction should move further east to Canal, and they'll open that section um, right south of Dillon's that is in the picture. Paul Grass Second Edition uh, continues to move. This is Paul Wartenberger Construction, and they're also doing the 27th Street. So they're moving back and forth between projects, but they're they're moving along on that. On June 7th, Hess Services began improvements to the 230th Avenue and 55th Street intersection. So this is a $2 million project that's being funded in part by the KDOT Economic Development Grant. It's expected to be completed in October, and they were able to widened some shoulders and stole some culverts um, at this early stage. North Vine, I think we're all familiar with that. Uh, they're in phase three, which is the light blue um, that's being constructed right now. A couple of the latest uh, aerial photos show, this is the teardrop roundabout at the interstate exit, and you can see it's uh, the west side really forming up, and then the east you can see the they are starting to frame up what will be the lanes. Um, and then in the background, as you look north on the left, you can see the Mopar. And then of course on the right is the picture is looking southbound. So you can see the 37th Street one taking shape as well. Kind of a better picture of the teardrop on the left. Um, again, you can see where they're getting ready to put the rebar in so they can pour the concrete. And then on the right side is a picture of the 37th and you can actually see uh, when this picture was taken, pretty much the south half of that roundabout is, is near completion. So they're moving right along. And then I'm, I am through, <laughs> unless you have questions. We should make a title. A's okay. happenings and upcoming <laughs> events. Thank Director you, of CBB, Melissa Dixon. Thank you, Colin. Good evening, Commissioners, Director of the Hayes Convention and Visitors Bureau, Melissa Dixon. And again, I'm very excited to tell you what's going on in Hayes. It feels really good to get back to doing what we do at our office. Um, summer exhibit is rolling at the Sternberg Museum. It's called Age of the Dinosaurs, and there's a lot of great motion and sound in these exhibits. Their, their visitor attendance is currently at 80% of an average summer, so they are pleased to be rebounding as well. All summer, you'll be able to go to the downtown Hayes Market under the pavilion on Saturday mornings, 7.30 to 11 a.m. All kinds of good stuff down there. If you have guests in town, it's a really fun outing. Uh, also under the pavilion, Boxes Lunch Summer Concert Series, live music during the lunch break, uh, first, third, and fifth Fridays. Wild West Festival is coming up, 4th of July weekend. Friday, three nights of concerts. Parade on Saturday, fireworks on Sunday. That time is actually 10 p.m. It won't be dark enough until 10 p.m. And we have general admission and VIP tickets at the Welcome Center. $20 in advance, $25 at the door. Uh, this is an event that is probably new to most people because we've only been able to have it one time. We had it uh, in July 2019. It's organized by some Hayes area bicyclists, uh, and they came to us for support. They do histor a tour of the historic churches of Ellis County on bicycle, and you can choose to do a 30 mile route, a 60 mile, uh, a 90 mile, or a 100 mile. Uh, and at each church, there's a snack station 
somebody to tell you about the history of the church and a performer from the Hay Symphony makes it very special. Uh, our part, we help run registration, we help stuff their packets, and we um, sponsor a hearty German meal when they get back to the pavilion. It's a very unique event, and it had about 100 riders the first year with um, lots of positive feedback. So we're expecting um, a good many more registering this year. Ellis County Fair is coming up July 10th through 17th. Uh, they'll have two nights of races out at RPM Speedway, two nights of rodeo, one evening of ranch rodeo, which means you can make your own team and go try your hand at calf roping and some other things. I think we should do that, fun. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? I think you should too. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then they'll... They'll close out with two nights of Thrill Show, which is monster trucks, trick motorcycle riders, uh, and the Globe of Death. <laughs> or the oh motorcycles. We should try we that, should try that, that, that one. Try that. <laughs> Jump right in. Uh, all musical entertainment on the Midway is free. There'll be several nights of music. And new to the Ellis County Fair this year is <coughs> Mechanical Bull, conveniently located near the Beer Garden. <laughs> and, a NASCAR, <laughs> and a NASCAR simulator, which is just a few dollars yeah, to try. The mayor wants to do that. <laughs> ride the bull. <laughs> July 24th, we'll have our sidewalk sale, Bazaar on the Bricks. Um, this is one of the few events where the street will be closed because uh, vendors will bring their wares out into the street, um, get there early. And this is an event organized by DHDC. Out at the sports complex in July, we'll have two big tournaments. Um, one is a national one where CBB has helped secure um, umpires' uh, hotel rooms for our umpires, uh, and we'll do packets for those coaches. Um, I don't have the tournament team numbers yet, but I'll get those to you when I have them. And last but not least, uh, you can enjoy 14 home games at Larks Parks in July. And happening this weekend, there's two more tournaments out at the sports complex. The first with 30 to 40 teams, the second around 70 teams, and then a race at RPM Speedway, and the Larks will play Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. All right, any questions? Melissa, we had a new hotel go online last week or this week? We did last week, I believe, Jesse, is that correct? Last week. They added 79 rooms to our inventory, and I believe we are at 1,119 now. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. You, you add up all the numbers of the teams that are coming and the activities that are going on. That's a huge number of people in this community. That's fantastic. Commissioner, comments? Commissioner Musil? I got nothing. Commissioner Mellick? I have nothing this evening. Burgess? You guys went out of here early? No, I, you got something. I got only thing I have is I'm excited to see all this. This, oh, is, this is so so much fun. I mean, this is exciting. Our our first year on the commission was all doom and gloom. And <laughs> <laughs> this is this is wonderful. I'm I'm so excited to see all these things happening and so people coming back. It's it's nice. This is yeah, puts a smile on my face. Yeah. So excited. That's why we changed names. I think I deserve that, Michael. <laughs> um, I, anybody that didn't get to um, the ribbon cutting of the library last Friday, uh, it was an absolutely wonderful event. Um, the library remodel is amazing. We should be very, very proud. Senator Moran was there, Representative Wasserman was there. Uh, and a really nice crowd. Uh, they'll give you a, a tour anytime you'd like to go down and see it, but to have a, a library like that in this community, Brandon Hines and his team should be congratulated. Brandon is just really a rock star in this kind of thing, and he's done a wonderful job as his team, and he will tell you his team has worked really hard. Um, the other thing I had was I've had a, a, two citizens, but it, one said it really nicely. Um, one citizen said, you know, you guys have a lot to be uh, proud of that you're doing on the commission. He said, but the thing you should be most proud of is the work being done on the streets in the city of Hayes. They, they commented on how much is being done, how quickly they get done, and how good they are when they're finished. And I thought that was a really nice comment just to randomly hear. So if you'll pass that along to everybody, I'd appreciate it. Nothing else? We're adjourned.